With this unit, we begin a study of the last major topic of the course, the study of multivariate functions, and we're going to begin by studying functions of two variables, functions that require two inputs. We're going to then look at how we can graph these functions. This will be a new challenge to what then graphing single variable functions. And as we go forward, we're going to introduce calculus ideas and see how calculus will work if we have functions of two or more variables. Let's consider an example to motivate all this. If we think about a summer day, some, like some of you are enjoying now, we would have daytime temperature information recorded by sites across the province. In particular, if you look at the profile of Ontario here, you can see we've got a loose mapping here of locations and temperatures at those locations. And this is pretty straightforward. We see some patterns just looking at it. Uh, we've got high temperatures down here, 27s. We've got lower temperatures up here, 21, a little warmer in the east, 24 degrees, and so on. So we get a pretty in quick and dirty understanding of the temperature distribution in the province, or at least in the southwestern corner of the province, by looking at this table of information. Now, when we get into defining our functions here, if we wanted to find the temperature at a point, say from that previous table, what information would we need to specify? Well, if we just go back for a second, if I wanted to know the temperature here at this location, corresponding to roughly here on the map, what would I have to specify? Well, it wouldn't be enough to specify that I want the longitude, because then I would have a choice of temperatures. It wouldn't be enough to specify the latitude, because again, I would have a choice of temperatures what I need to specify is both the longitude and latitude. And in that particular model, longitude looks an awful lot like an x-coordinate left to right, and the latitude looks an awful lot like a y-coordinate up and down vertically in our traditional uh, geographic notation. And what we would have then is a function that has two inputs, x and y. The only way to find temperature is to specify both values. Specify values for two inputs. And for each pair of inputs, of input values, there is only one output. That's the idea of a function. Output, there we go. That output is the single temperature at that location. So I can't have two temperatures at a single point on the map. Again, we'd be assuming some extra constraints here, like temperature at ground level or some other constraint like that. But in principle, we associate one location with one temperature. What that means is we can define a real valued function, so these are our temperatures, as a function of two variables. It's a rule that takes a pair of numbers x, y in this case here, and ass assigns them a single output number. Now, the set of valid x and y coordinates, x, y pairs, is the domain, and the set of resulting output numbers is the range. So we have the same terminology we had with one variable functions, but the domain will get a lot more interesting when we have pairs of values in our inputs. So one way to think about these functions is that because our inputs are pairs of real numbers, we can think of the points that we're sending as input as points on the plane. And so the domain can be pictured as a region in the xy plane. So we would have an input of x and y 
and we have regions which are valid x and y points and regions which are not valid. Mostly we're going to deal with functions that are defined everywhere or almost everywhere, but we'll see examples where there's boundaries that are going to be important. The output is a single third number and it can be represented as an interval on the real line. So our classic here would be to have z as our output or temperature in our previous example. And we can have a range of that interval being the outputs. In our particular case from the example, the range would be something like 21 to 27. I think those are the values we saw. Or 28 certainly was a larger value than anything we had there. So that would be the range of the function. So if we take a careful look at that, just to reassure ourselves here where I got that 28 from, we would look back at this function and say the lowest value I see is 21. I think that's the lowest one on the entire map. Excellent. Uh, the highest temperature would be 27.5, I think. That looks right. So the domain, or sorry, the range rather, would be the range would be 21 degrees. T in the range 21 to 27.5 degrees. The domain is actually an interesting thing to look at as well. In this particular graph, these parts of the map, this region here, is in the domain because there's a temperature defined on those points. Whereas this region here, all those points would not be in the domain because at this point we don't have temperature readings. They're somewhere over water in this particular case, but from a mathematical perspective, we simply don't have a value of the temperature there, so we don't have an output for those inputs. Now let's consider the association between this new idea of functions of two variables and try to tie it back to functions of a single variable. We'll do this in a concrete travel case. When you travel from Toronto at latitude 43 and longitude 79.5, so that's, here's Toronto here, and you travel to North Bay, which is at the latitude at the upper end here, there we are, the trip turns out to be almost directly north if you could follow roads that follow that path exactly. Well, we can imagine if we traveled this route, we could have, let's not put the axis quite there, no, let's, we'll do a break. There we go. So if we made this our travel, we could say that we're starting at 43 latitude we're ending up at 46.5 latitude. And the longitude's implied in this. So our longitude is implied as uh, 79.5 at all locations. By making that restriction and ignoring everything with higher or lower longitude, we are focusing our attention just on this column in the table, then we can sketch a graph, 21, 22, 3, 4, 5. Our temperatures go from 25.5 down to 25, down to 23, down to 22, back up to 23, 24, 23, and then down to 21. So let's put this. There we go. So from the table, we can sketch out a graph of the temperature versus location along the route that we would be traveling from Toronto to North Bay. Temperature's high, then it gets lower, then it gets a bit higher, then it gets lower again. What this example does is it shows that we have a function of two variables. We can construct a function of a single variable by keeping one of the original variables constant. So we have something which has a range, a field of values, but we can tease out a single graph, a single regular 
one variable input, one variable output function here that is more like what we've seen before, simply by restricting our consideration to one input variable. Are there other ways that we could do this? Well, for sure, there's an obvious parallel here. We could uh, study an east-west an east-west route at a fixed latitude. And in that case, our graph would look something like longitude and temperature, doing whatever it does. The other interesting route is that we don't have to pick any particular, it doesn't have to be north, south, east, west, we can be more general than that. We can take other directions. And one one that would be familiar to residents of Ontario is we could follow the 401 highway. And in that graph, we would have the same basic uh, structure, temperature, and we could have the highway, highway distance. That's really illegible. I'll try to fix that. But we'd have something like zero here. That would be Windsor. And then we'd have Kingston, which is about, uh, I guess, about 700 kilometers all along the way. And then we could have Cornwall at the other end of the province. And if we go back to our sketch of the graph here, oops. If we go back to our sketch of the graph here, what we'd be capturing is a route through, through Toronto, through Kingston, and we'd get a graph 27, 27, uh, 26.5, 26. That's what our graph would look like, our one variable relationship between a location along a road and the matching temperature as we move along that road. We're going to use this idea of translations from multivariate functions to single variables, mostly because a lot, we've developed all our calculus ideas and we have the most experience in graphing with one variable function. So we want to be able to tie those two ideas together as quickly as possible, but then see what the consequences are of having more than one variable in our input. We'll see that as we go through this and the later units.